Okay, welcome to the Sunday Shop Update. Um, we're going to do some tests on mitre joints today. Now, in the week, if you caught a video, a real quick video, I spent an hour at the end of the day trying to run some tests on some mitre joints that I did. Uh, I had no idea that they would be quite as strong as they were, and they were stronger than the clamps I used. So it was a bit of a weird, um, bit of a weird one. But I thought I'd publish it anyway, just because that's what I, you know, you see how I got to where I am on this test. Now, I don't want to get any more technical and start rigging up threaded bar and all that. I looked into it and it's just a right faff for me. Um, but what I did was I switched to uh, a really good like ton and a half, two ton ratchet strap and I can get some serious pulling on that, more consistent. There is a bit of jerk as you're clicking it, but I think that's probably good to be perfectly honest because that's really putting stress on the joint. It's not just a continual pull. Um, as I said, I don't really want to get any more technical and I'm probably going to finish this on this video, but I've had some really interesting results I want to share today uh, with Just Glue Type Bond 1, with ET500 resin, with Tenso, Clamex, and a combination of temps, Tenso, Clamex, and the Domino. Um, so let's get started. Uh, and just before we get going, because I know loads of people comment on this sort of stuff, everything I'm using, I have paid for. Every clip, Every bit of glue, I've paid for all of this. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just testing this for my own benefit because really the Lamello excels at sheet good connections. 20 or 30 of these Lamellos all around a, a walk-in wardrobe or whatever it be, kitchen. And that's where it gets to strength, where it doesn't even need glue because there's so many of them in a row adding pressure. Um, but I'm going to be using it for that, but I just saw an opportunity here to get the mitre legs, which I really love and I've really liked working with over the last few years designing. It's so quick to get the perfect mitre that I was interested for myself to see how strong and if it added strength. There is no doubt that it makes the mitre perfect every time and really, really quick to use. Quick enough that you can glue a whole table um, using ET500 with a single nozzle, the whole table leg system under five minutes, which is just not possible using clamps. So anyway, let's get on to the testing and uh, see how we go. So I've placed the bolt upside down through one of the bench dogs and just drilled a hole in each piece just to hold it from moving. Okay, just to be clear, the last test with the pressure was at 50. These are now at 80. Okay, so I just run this first test with the Domino and the Tenso Type on one um, because I know it adds strength. So I just put this in there at 80 to give us a reference. So this is the Lamello Tenso. So next up, tight bond one only. Okay, this is now the Lamello Clamex. So let's just take a quick look on the tent. So we've got a glue failure and pretty much the connection looks okay. And on the Type Bond 1, again, just glue failure, all the face of the wood's okay. Quite different on the Clamex, something quite different. It could just be the wood grain, um, but it totally broke out this section here. And this, you know, the, the readings on the scales do feel if you were here trying it, this feels really, really strong, followed by this, and that just broke really quickly. Um, now, you did see how I clamped that uh, using the woodpecker clamps. Now, you can forget using one of these. I'll show you what happens. 
on some large stock. Just put this in as best we can. Keep it really nice and tight. Push that together and look. That is opening this up. And the bottom isn't that good either. You see here, it's really off. So I think, certainly for big stuff, this sort of clamp is absolutely useless. So I'd prefer to use this. It's something I picked up in the States from Woodpecker. It does work really well. It's a little bit fiddly on certain stuff because you've got to make sure that the um, clamp you're using doesn't get in the way of the other clamp. So on the smaller stuff like this, it's a bit fiddly. But once you get it on, get it centered, it's pretty good. So that's gonna hold it there. And I really did put a lot of pressure. I would have thought I put more pressure on that. I'm not sure, but um, that was by far the weakest joint and the most difficult to glue up. Okay, first up, this is ET500 with the Clamex. That's actually bending. The wood is bending. Even the ratchet strap's not strong enough. Worried I'm gonna get hit by it. That's it, same. It's 18. It's 19 then. 2,200. Zoom out a bit, that wood is actually bending. Now I'm worried about getting hit because this is under masses of pressure, but we'll try. There it goes, it's just broke. Whew. 2000 max. Let's have a look, clean break, what's interesting. God, I can't. That is so strong, I can't even release the ratchet strap. And it's still holding. Fantastic. That really is a good result. That was over 2,000. It's still, if I take this off, that is still trying to hold on. Just broke it there. I couldn't actually pull that any harder with that ratchet strap. That was over 2,000. We'll look at the playback. Alright, I'm going to get hit by it. That's it, it's 18. Nineteen then, two thousand two hundred. So the results are a bit misleading here because this feels so much stronger than the others and took a lot longer to break. There it goes. It's just broke. Whew. Two thousand max. Let's have a look. Clean break. What's interesting? That is so strong, I can't even release the ratchet strap. And it's still holding. Oh, there we go. So this is the Tensor with the ET500. It's well up in the thousands. 1,500, 1,800, 2,000. Whoa. So now the ET500 with just traditional clamps.
The ET500 is way outperforming any, obviously, wood glue. So just a quick look at the failure again. This is really good, this English chestnut. The failure's a bit of grain tear out, you can see. Just, just the glue as normal. These are both really interesting. So, they've both kind of cut themselves a little biscuit in around that joint, so they really glued. What I would say, the difference is, and I'm not sure it comes across on this video, is that with the Tenso um, and the Clamex, especially the Clamex, it takes longer to break the joint. So the readings seem to be the same for um, those two joints, or very close, without any connections. But as soon as it hits that high load, the non-connected joint breaks and shears, whereas the clam, um, particularly the Clamex, um, that really holds on. It takes ages to break it. So it is adding a lot of strength and keeping the pressure off the glue for a lot longer. Okay, Type Bond 3 and the Clamex. This is Type Bond 3 with the Tenso. Wow, that seemed really low to me. So Type Bond 3, traditional clamps, no connectors inside. Maxitech D3 PVA. This is with Clamex. Maxitech D3 PVA with Tenso. Maxitech D3 PVA, uh, traditional clamping, no internal connectors. Okay, well, you can make of that what you will. It isn't a scientific test, I agree, but this is not a science lab, um, and that's about as complicated as I want to get. For me, uh, the obvious choice is to use, depending on the fitting, the Clamex, or you can use the Tenso if you don't want to see any hole, and just use ET45. It's a real game changer for me because I love using the ET45, but it's the open time is a pain because you need to be really quick with your clamps. Um, and let's not forget the fact, I may have said it before, but the system's really designed for, the Mellow system is more for sheet goods, where you're using multiples of these Clamexes or Tensos, and believe you and me, you get four or five of them together, and you don't need any glue, but for these kind of leg joints that you can see me doing here, and I can only get one in, then obviously the glue is important, although depending on the design, the last table I built, I actually put it together using the Clamex with no um, glue or resin, and it was really sturdy. And the other thing to point out is there is three clamps per mitre in this system. You might get away with a bit less if you're gonna clamp across a, like a picture frame, four corners, but you're still talking about four clamps. So on the table leg design, that's 28 clamps. And on that table, I use none. And the other benefit is the twist. So if you're clamping like a picture frame and you're using long clamps there and the other ones, you can get an often with the pressure, you'll get some kind of twist in it. And believe you and me, these Clamex and Tenso mitres are spot on. I mean, I could show you, this is just a rough cut and I'll just come and show you. Look at this mitre, look. It's just perfect. The join here is absolutely spot on. So there's loads of benefits. I know that a straight glue joint in a couple of those tests looked as good, but it's not consistent because you may not be clamping that corner as well, or you may try and over clamp it and end up twisting your frame. So I'm really pleased with it. It's, it's, I've got some stuff coming up that I'm designing for people and it's designed around 
having these wonderful clean mitres and gluing, gluing up with ET uh, ET500 or, um, or no glue, depending on the thing, is gonna be part of incorporated in that design while I'm designing it, sketching it out or whatever. So I hope you found that useful in some way. Um, I'm gonna change the name and description of the Sunday Shop Update to Shop Talk or Sunday Shop Talk. And I'm gonna put it at the beginning of the, um, the naming of the video to try and separate the builds. There's a lot of people that follow me and watch the stuff that kind of want to see me build stuff only. Um, and I get a lot of nice comments about not doing too much talking or playing too much music. Um, and I hope you all know on Patreon, you can see much longer kind of shop versions behind the scenes of all the new builds that are going forward and the last three or four going back. If you need more in-depth on resins, connections, what I'm using, that's really the place to go. I want to keep the builds going on my main YouTube. So Sunday update's gone and Shop Talk's gonna be the new thing where we deal with clamping pressures and new tools, etc. Next week, if it arrives, I'm quite excited. It's gonna be wide belt sander time. So watch this space. Thanks so much for watching as always and thank you to my patrons. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.